Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel's Television. I'm Millicent Walker. On the news this hour, Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap makes a desperate call to the United Nations on the right to peaceful assembly and association. Convener of Revolution Now Movement, Ms. Samuel Ishore, and others on trial for alleged treason to spend Christmas Day in DSS custody as sitting judge recuses himself from trial. And a Doe State Governor raises alarm on the fire that raised the Akiosa market and some parts of the Doe State Development Property Agency in Benin City points the finger at people who allegedly want his administration to fail. Welcome everyone to the program. Now while you get ahead of the celebrations for the holidays this Christmas Eve, we kick off from the courtrooms where the Federal High Court sitting in Jos, the Plateau State Capital, has fixed December the 31st, 2019 for ruling on the no case submission by former Governor of the State, Mr. John Zhang. While the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is prosecuting Mr. Zhang on an amended 17-count charge for corruption and misappropriation of Plateau State funds, to the tune of 6.32 billion naira. The former governor, now a senator, is being prosecuted alongside a cashier in the office of the secretary to the state government, Mr. Yusuf Pam. Now, Justice Daniel Longji had on Tuesday, December the 17th, 2019, set December 23rd, 2019, for the adoption of written addresses by the parties to the no case submission of the defense. At yesterday's proceeding, counsel to the first and second defendants submitted that the filing of their no-case submission was in order and asked the judge to set the defendants free, arguing that the EFCC had failed to establish a case against them. Well, the prosecution counsel made an oral application for the court to allow him more time to respond to the no-case submission, insisting that the defendants had case a case to answer. On Monday, what started out as a peaceful protest at the headquarters of the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja took a violent twist after the Freedom Rally was disrupted by another group of protesters. Trouble started as both groups held their grounds on the demand for the release of Revolution Now leader Mr. Shore and other perceived political detainees. While one of the groups led by Mr. Dejiade Ojun asked the federal government to obey the order of the court and free Mr. Shore and others in custody, the opposing group reaffirmed their support for the government and that national interest supersedes individual ones. A co convener of one of the groups, Mr. Dejiade Ojun, was attacked during the clash. Placard carrying youths demanding the release of the leader of Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Showare, and other perceived political detainees. They are in front of the National Human Rights Commission building, seeking the attention of the Commission in realizing their demands. This is coming after the expiration of the 14 day ultimatum issued by a civil society group, Enough is Enough, to the federal government to release Mr. Showare. Their conduct was peaceful until this second group of protesters arrived to the scene with their banners and placards showing support for the government. And then all was let loose with one of the conveners of the group in the eye of the storm. They came to beat us physically. As I speak to you now, some of our colleagues, we don't know their fate because they've chased them. And this happened in front of the security. We went to and tell the, 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 the security to ensure that they separate at least these two rallies. Because we are here before and all we are doing, we are just standing peacefully, calmly, trying to wait for the executive secretary of the National Human Rights Commission so that we can give him our demand. The tension over, the leader of the second group, Ibrahim Danladi, claims that the Freedom Rally protesters hauled insults on them. Nobody asked anybody to, 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 
to be violent or to be brutal against any other person because the other people are doing what uh, what the other people are doing they are doing it because it is it is inscribed in the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria that every nigerian has the right to protest either for or against it was because they started insulting the people that we came together that was the reason why some of them started agitating that why will they be insulting them because they are equally nigerians the sort of clash may not be far from over, as the Freedom Rally protesters insist that they will not be deterred in their actions until Showare and other detainees are released. The police has its job cut out for it to avoid a repeat of today's violent clash. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SARAP, has petitioned the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to peaceful assembly and association, urging him to publicly express concerns about the growing human rights violations and abuses in Nigeria. SARAP alleges that Nigerian authorities and police yesterday morning in Abuja failed to stop attacks on peaceful demonstrators by young men apparently armed with sticks and sharp objects. The police officers who were present did not intervene, according to Serap, decisively to stop the attacks or arrest any attackers. In the petition dated 24 December 2019 and signed by the Serap's deputy director, Kolawale Luwadare, he believes the government of President Buhari is responsible under the Nigerian constitution, as amended, and international law to protect the safety and rights of protesters and create an environment conducive to a diverse and pluralistic expression of ideas dissent from uh, government policy. Now, according to Sarab, the wave of protests against repression by both the federal and state authorities illustrates a broken social contract between authorities and Nigerians. Well, for the Convener of Revolution Now movement, Mr. Samuel Ishore, he will not be enjoying the Christmas season with his loved ones, as Justice Ahmed Mohammed of the Federal High Court in Abuja withdrew from the fundamental rights enforcement suit uh, instituted, seeking an order for his release. Justice Mohammed ruled that he could not hear uh, Shore's case, saying it was the fair, just, and proper thing to do in view of previous publications by Shore's medium, Sahara reporters, accusing him of taking a bribe. Justice Mohammed withdrew from the case following allegations of bias.